Hello, I'm Ben Daniels. Hi, I'm Alfonso Herrera. Okay. Quite easy to differentiate. Yes, <laughs> Mexican accent, British. <laughs> so, Alfonso, first of all, uh, how was your uh, journey to uh, American television? Uh, you first made a sensei, then you made a pilot from uh, Cowboy, how was the Urban Cowboy, yeah. Urban Cowboy, and now in the lectures you have, are you adapting to this? I'm, I'm, I, I feel very lucky because I'm still working, and uh, I ha I've had the privilege to, to still be doing what I love to, which is yeah. And uh, yeah, it's been a journey, but what I can say is that I like to to learn. That's my main goal. And, uh, this has not been the, uh, the exception. It's a great show with great cast, great actors, with a great director, such as Luke Wyatt, the writer Jerry, who did an amazing job. So I feel very lucky. Did you start to act in For you? Uh, when you have to think, you have to. It's, uh, when, I, when I act in Spanish, it's like. Uh, it's obviously very, very, very easy. It's easier. But I have to work with it. It's not yet. It's not my first language, so I have to. It's just brilliant. Yeah. A, and we get like script changes right up to the wire. So he's having to like relearn it. But you know, he's, no, he's always there, he's never off. It's great to work with. And obviously, when you have a really actor, that great accent, it's easier for you to know the instrument. He makes it easier to work with him because he's, we always <laughs> have, have a laugh, we always like to have fun on set. Besides Ben, he's an amazing actor. He's, he's doing an amazing job in this, in this show. You see it. I feel very lucky. It seems like uh, Hollywood's starting to take horror serious again. Yeah. Back in the 70s, with The Exorcist, they, it was like really good performance, great cinematography involved. With this Exorcist, we're getting the same kind of vibe. We're getting great actors, okay? Great cinematography. I had a chance to check out the, the pilot. Oh, you saw it? I loved it. I loved it. It opens up so much. How much creati uh, creative input do you guys get with each other's character? Because I know you guys are very talented, guys. Is it by the script or is no, it going to be... I, um, the script, the original script, my part was written for a 30-year-old American. So when, when I got it and I read it... Um, well, I didn't read it to start off with because I thought it was a terrible idea. I thought it was a remake. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even look at the script because I loved that movie so much. And um, when I did and saw what Jeremy Slater was doing, and I was like, okay, so it's that same world. And it was then sort of going in and going, okay, this is... Then they didn't want to see me. They were like, we love him. I did a self-tape. They didn't watch it. And then um, my agents were like, you have to see the self-tape. And then they saw it and they were like, oh, right, we see what he's doing with it. Bring him in. And then they were really... Um, they let me have huge input into creating the character. So it's fantastic for me. I like, gave them a backstory that they went with. You know, I've set him coming from this tiny little town in England where I come from. Even the choice of music, they let me kind of have a say in, which is unheard of on any show, let alone a big network. So they were, they were just fantastic. I thought they were the most amazing, amazing people to work with. We've had a great time. That title does come with a huge bar. Like, I know, right? Like, for you guys, you know you have to do your own thing, but also just that title. What is it like for you guys? Just every day going, oh, yeah. Well, it's a, it's a great responsibility. But at the same time, I I think it's, it's, a, it's a matter of kind of perspective. Because it's also a great opportunity. And it's also a great opportunity to deliver something uh, positive that horror fans and people that love that genre would enjoy. So I would I would like to see it as a great opportunity. Um, it's um yeah of course it's like huge it's huge to fill. But I'm from like I'm from a theatre background and like you know those classic plays 
that get done time and time again. So it's it, it's sort of like if, if everyone was like, oh my god, that Hamlet was the definitive Hamlet, you know, it would never ever get done again. So it's kind of like I was like, mm, yeah, okay, but we can do this, we can do this, and you put your own stamp on it, and and yet you, you don't tread on the toes of the perfection of that movie, but you treat it with the same seriousness. And, you know, it's very grounded and very rooted, and Rupert Wyatt was very keen to make sure it lived and breathed in a very real world, like the novel does and the movie does. So it feels, it doesn't feel like a comic book. You're watching something serious, and the characters are hugely three-dimensional, which is great as a genre. It's what we were saying. We've moved away from that kind of horror of the 60s and 70s. All my favourite horror is from, you know, occasionally you'll get a movie like It Follows, or The Babadook, or The Witch, which, which, which have that, they're very grounded, yeah, really grounded, three-dimensional, not schlocky at all. Not that I don't like that kind of horror, but in the 60s and 70s there were big directors making horror movies, um, you know, and I love those too, yeah. and so hopefully this, you know, this will live in that same arena. Oh, it's our hope, anyway. So, what, as you, you were naming off movies, I was going to ask, what is your modern horror inspirations, or what are you enjoying right now that's... Um, uh, the ones that I've really enjoyed, I've mentioned. But the ones that I watch over... I, I mean, I, I re-watched The Brood again the other night, you know, which is my favourite film in the world. Well, I mean, I shouldn't say that with humour in the room, with the fly. But, um, you know, my top five are The Exorcist, uh, The Birds, The Evil Dead, which I know is but it, it had a great energy. Jaws and Alien are my top five. And then they're strange after that, like Peeping Tom or The Innocents or... Um, yeah, I, I love it. How, how far in the region? Okay, so you guys have a, a, a relation, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the show. How far along have you guys gone on that that stuff? Uh, as far as like the complexity with the characters, because this show is going to get very complex. It looks like yeah. it, you know the pilot sets it. How far along are you guys in the script and everything like that without giving spoilers? <laughs> it's very difficult to. Well, it would be very difficult for me to answer that without giving some yeah. spoilers. But it's. Uh, in a certain way, this link is generated, is created in multiple continents. And through the show, we're going to understand why that happens. I have to be very, very honest, sometimes uh, there are many hypotheses in my head trying to understand why that link was generated. Was it destiny? Was it God? Was it God? Of them or, or something else. Uh, I'm still asking those questions. I think we're gonna we're gonna find that out. We don't know. I mean, we've read we've read two more episodes yeah. after the pilot, and they're great, and their relationship is, is, is it just goes completely new places in episodes two or three already. But you know, we're there all the time going, well, "What about this? What is this?" Thing? What is this? What is this? But um, it's it, it's all it's very rich. It's yes. good. And also, what I find very very interesting are the, the contrast. The contrast is uh, rich. Marcus' character is completely the opposite. He's he proves that he's outside the Italian has his own house, and you have Father Marcus that is this warrior that has got evil scenes. Uh, no. Age 11. So age 11. He has seen level like he's doing completely different what's happening to life. Like the boy. Somehow. Somehow. They don't particularly like each other. Thank you guys like so us. much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.